Hello everyone, I am Bob and this is the Home Bitcoin Immersion Mining Channel. In this episode, I'm going to show you my newly delivered DCX BitPod home mining system. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so in my last build episode, I covered how my first attempt at building my own mining system turned out, and it didn't turn out too well. If you remember from that episode, I had a plastic tank built, which didn't hold up to mining temperatures. It failed and leaked, and it stopped me from mining. Plastic is just a lousy material to use for a Bitcoin mining tank. And so to start over with a metal tank, I had two options, to build or to buy. Now, as much as I enjoy designing and building new things, starting from scratch and designing a whole new tank out of metal and then finding a shop to build it just seems like it's going to be really expensive and a huge hassle. I really didn't want to put all that work in and spend maybe another two grand on a tank that might fail. Also, I've learned quite a bit over the last year or so, and there are a lot of other options that are more cost efficient and time efficient than building your own. One of those options, and the one I've chosen, is the DCX BitPod system. This last May, I attended the Bitcoin 2023 conference and saw a DCX BitPod system in person and was able to talk to the DCX crew. I was really impressed with how the BitPod system was designed and built, and I was also impressed with the DCX team's extensive experience in working with Immersion Systems. They've worked with Immersion Systems for years, and the design of the BitPod system shows it. The DCX team really wants to see more home mining done and wants to see folks like you and I using that miner heat around our homes. And they designed the BitPod system to help make this happen. After the conference, I reached out to the DCX team and arranged for a BitPod system to be delivered to me. And here's a photo of what arrived. The entire system fits on a single small pallet and everything was packed securely and safely to make sure nothing was damaged on its way here. And so the next step is to see what I got. Okay, so when I got my pallet, my intent was to do kind of a unpalletization video, uh, show you how the packaging comes off, how the whole thing was put together, but uh, a rainstorm happened and I really needed to get everything indoors, so I wasn't able to shoot that video, but instead I just took everything out of the pallet and brought it down here. And so this is what you get on that very small pallet. You get everything you need for a dual loop home Bitcoin immersion mining system. Everything was packed, as you see here, except for the two cases of Thermosafe, which were inside uh, the tank during shipment to reduce the bulk. Also, everything here was packed, as you see. Um, I'm going to unpack these really quickly through the magic of video. And this is what everything looks like completely unpacked. As you can see, there's not a lot to this system. Starting on the far side, we have the dry cooler assembly all ready to go. Uh, we got enough hose to go between the dry cooler and the tank. Uh, we have two supports to mount the dry cooler, three containers of Thermosafe R, which is more than enough to immerse your miners, uh, a bunch of little components that will put everything together, a couple panels that look kind of cool for either side of the tank, and the tank assembly itself. Now with everything unpacked, the next step is to walk you through each part of the system, showing you how it goes together and how it works. And the first part of the system to cover, and the part that I'm most interested in, is the BitPod tank. And really, there's not much to do here to get it up and running. And the first step in prepping the system for use is to open the tank. Uh, there's two latches here on the back. Uh, just make sure both of those are off. And then the top just hinges and comes off. And the next step is to reach in and remove the two plastic covers covering the inlet and outlets to the tank. Now, the package comes with a two-piece flow plate design, which consists of a stainless steel plate and a metal wire mesh with some ports welded to it. Um, it's pretty easy to install this. Just set this in the bottom of the tank. And next up is to work with this steel plate. Now, this steel plate is an optional piece of equipment. Uh, the system will work without it, uh, but what this does is it has some cutouts here that are uh, matching the bottom of an S19 miner. And what this will do is it will block the flow around the miners and focus all that fluid flow up through the miners. This is going to maximize your efficiency. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, these are almost all cut out by a laser cutting, it looks like. And you just wiggle them in place until all the insides pop out. 
And with all the holes removed, the next step is to place this in the bottom of the tank. And there is an orientation here. You want to make sure that the thick side is facing towards the back of the tank. This will place all your plugs towards the back of the tank where they exit through this notch. And the last step to prep the tank before you use it is to put the front and back panels on. Uh, these panels, for the most part, are just decorative. They, they kind of look really nice. They really aren't going to do much for you, but they look cool. And uh, all you need to do is remove the four screws, put these on, put the four screws back on, and you're done. Now, as far as how this tank works, it works like any other immersion system. Uh, you have the main tank where the miners go in and the bulk of the fluid go in. Uh, after that, you have the hot coolant recovery. Uh, it just covers this much on this tank. And below the hot coolant recovery is the pump. And I really like the way they design this in that the hot coolant recovery drops right into the pump. And so the pump is always going to be fully supplied with fluid and never be starved. The pump itself is a three-speed pump, which gives you some variability in how much fluid you circulate through the system. And as you can see, the outlet of the pump goes directly into the heat exchanger. Now, the heat exchanger itself is a great size. It's roughly four and a half inches by a little over 11 inches. Uh, I counted, I think, 30 plates in the heat exchanger. Uh, that's a great size for this size of a system. Now, DCX states that this setup will dissipate at least 14 kilowatts of heat from the minor volume. And the material DCX chose to make their system uh, steel, and it looks like it's powder coated, uh, this is going to last a long time as well. Another thing I really like about this design is the fact that this is a double wall design. Uh, it may be hard to see here, but the outer steel uh, box is separated from the inner steel box by some little plastic spacers. And what this does is it provides some thermal insulation from the hot center of the miner to the outside that may be in your room. Um, this will help lower the amount of heat that gets dissipated into your room. Now, for many people, that may not be a big deal, but for those of you who are in my situation where I have my miners in a relatively closed room, uh, every bit of insulation I get is going to help manage the heat load into my mining room. The last thing I really like about this setup is its compactness. Uh, it's a very small system. Uh, this has just enough room to get a pump and a heat exchanger and two miners in it. Uh, there's not any real wasted space here. It's a really efficient use of the volume and the design. Now, all systems do have their downsides as well. And for this system, uh, you have to know that the pump is wired for European power. Uh, that's 240 volts a single phase. Uh, if you are going to run this in the U.S. like I am, uh, you can't just plug this in the wall. Uh, you are going to have to buy a power adapter. Uh, I have a link below uh, for some models you can use. It's about 100 bucks, so not a big deal. Now, the other downside, if you want to call it that, is that this system is a very simple system. You plug it in and it runs. Uh, it's really not made to run with a control system. Uh, I'll be showing you how I tweak this to make it run with my control system. But honestly, if you're looking to just get up and running, uh, that's not really a big deal. You can plug this in and just start mining. Okay, so with the tank covered, the other side of the BitPod system to talk through is going to be the dry cooler. Um, now, just like the tank, there are some assembly steps we'll need to take before this can be used. And the first step is to get the dry cooler right side up. Uh, this is the bottom surface uh, of the dry cooler. It only works uh, in one orientation. And to help with shipping, the brackets and the supports aren't attached. Now, it's pretty easy to put this together. Uh, both of these supports, uh, these are steel plates. Uh, they simply bolt into place at the bottom of the uh, dry cooler like this. Now, with these two brackets installed, if you have some place where you want to mount this cooler, uh, these four holes would be great mounting points. Um, basically, a half inch bolt would be enough to secure the whole assembly in place. If you don't have any type of location and you want to have this setting on its own, uh, this is where these two large supports come in. And the way this works is we have a bolt, a locking nut, and two different sizes of washers. Uh, you have a big washer and a small washer. Uh, the small washer goes on the bottom of the plate and slides into the groove in the support. The big washer goes on the other side of the plate where the bolt holds everything together. And after you have the two supports mounted, you simply flip this right side up. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I want to show you how you connect the rubber holes to the fittings here. 
Now, normally you wouldn't attach those rubber hoses right now. You'd wait until the dry cooler is in place and your immersion mining tank is in place, run the lines, make sure everything is where it needs to be, and then make the connections. But they're right here and available, so I'm just gonna show you how they're done because it's easy to see. And the way this works is you're gonna take the end of your hose and slide the loosened clamp onto it. Now, this is a tight fit. It actually takes some work to get it down the rubber hose. Uh, probably helps to maybe lubricate this a little with some of your uh, dielectric fluid oil. Uh, but once this is placed, uh, this simply just kind of fits on the end of these fittings, goes on pretty easily. At that point, you're going to move the clamp up to the edge, and then you're going to tighten that clamp down with the ratchet. Now with the dry cooler positioned right side up, the next step is to take off this access panel. Uh, there's four of these plastic covers. Each one of those need to be taken off to gain access to four screws to take off this front cover. And with the cover off, we can see all the internal components of the dry cooler. Starting with the bottom left hand side, uh, this is the inlet uh, for fluid coming from your immersion tank. Uh, right on top of that is this brass fitting. Uh, this is a fill fitting for filling up your dry cooler cooling loop with water or glycol water mixture. Uh, this is a check valve. Uh, you take this cap off, uh, pump in your fluid, and it will prevent any fluid from coming out. This is also a way you can pressurize your cooling loop. Now above that is your pump. This is the pump for the secondary loop of your dual loop system. And above that are two valves. Uh, first, a ball valve, uh, that's used to isolate the radiator uh, if you want to work on something. And above that and up to the right here, maybe hard to see, is an air vent. Now, this air vent is used during the filling process. This allows you to let that air escape as you are filling up fluid into the radiator. And below that is the inlet and outlet to the radiator itself. Uh, on the outlet of the radiator down here, you can see a thermocouple, and that thermocouple is connected to the fan controller. And above the fan controller is a circuit breaker box. Uh, that box has two breakers, uh, one for the fan, one for the pump. They're both clearly labeled F and P. Now, when you're setting up your system, filling it full of your cooling fluid, and first getting everything to run, you're gonna keep this panel off so you can see what's going on here. But during normal operation, that panel has to be on to prevent any air escaping through this opening and lessening your cooling efficiency through the radiator. Now, DCX has a YouTube video out there walking through how to use all of this when you are first getting your system up and running and filling your system. I definitely would watch that to get all the details. I'm just gonna be covering this on a high level. And the way this works is you're gonna be connecting your rubber lines to this side and the other side of your mining system. Now here, as I said before, this is the inlet and this is the outlet. Uh, on the miner side, on the heat exchanger, there are very clear arrows showing which way the fluid should flow there. Now, just like in the immersion tank, uh, the power cord here is also set up for European power. Uh, you are gonna need to buy uh, another transformer box, uh, just like for the other side. Again, it's only a hundred bucks, pretty easy to buy, um, but you need to do that to make sure the system runs. Now, once you are connected to power, the breaker box is gonna be used to control the pump. Uh, if the breaker's on, the pump will run. If the breaker's off, the pump will not run. Now, the fan breaker runs a little differently. If the fan breaker is on, the control box will be overrided and the fan will be run at full speed. If the fan breaker is off, that means that the fan controller will be controlling the speed of the fan. It'll be using this thermocouple to determine how hot the fluid is going through the radiator and will adjust the fan speed accordingly. This is really nice since if you're not running at full power, the system will throttle down your fan and make it a little quieter to run. Now, when it comes to first filling your system with your water and glycol mixture, you're going to use this check valve and fitting to supply your water. Uh, you're also going to want to use this air vent to let air out of the system as the fluid takes its place. Uh, this can be a little time consuming. You may have to pump some water, allow the air to leak. Uh, you may have to monkey around with that a little, uh, but eventually all the air will be displaced by your fluid. Now, as I've covered in past videos, the cooling loop here is gonna be a pressurized loop. And that means the highest point of the system must be at positive pressure relative to ambient. Now DCX has recommended running their system at between two and four bar, which is roughly between 30 and 60 PSI. 
They also note that the maximum pressure you should ever run this at is six bar, which is almost 90 PSI. Uh, that's a very high pressure for a pressurized system. You should never have anything near that. You really don't need that high pressure to run a pressurized cooling loop. Now, the last step in setting things up before you turn the fan on, it's to remove the foam backing here that's attached to the dry cooler. Um, this is there to protect those fragile fins from getting dented or otherwise damaged. Uh, I recommend keeping that on as long as you can just to make sure this system is as good as it can be when you start running it. Now, a couple more things about installing the dry cooler. Uh, first, you want to make sure wherever you are installing this, there's maybe one to two feet, if not more, of spacing on either side of the dry cooler. This will enable air to flow cleanly and through the dry cooler without hitting any kind of obstructions. And secondly, if you can, you want to place your dry cooler out of the sunlight. Uh, sunlight isn't going to damage anything. This is made to handle pretty much all weather. Uh, but the sunlight is only going to heat everything up, and that's going to hurt your cooling efficiency. Now, when it comes to my overall impression of the dry cooler, I think it's pretty neat. Uh, this system is rated at 15 kilowatts, which matches the capacity of the immersion tank, so these things are made to work together. And although 15 kilowatts is a lot higher than any minor hardware today, this gives you enough capacity to handle any minor changes into the future. Uh, second of all, what I really like about this system is the adaptive fan. Uh, the fan will only go as fast as it needs to go, which means this is going to be probably one of the quieter systems you can get if you're like myself in a neighborhood and you really don't want to annoy your neighbors. And finally, what I really like about the system, again, is its compactness. This really isn't that big. Uh, you could mount this outside your house. It's not that much bigger than an air conditioning system, so it's not going to really be that intrusive in a home setting. Now, taking the whole system together, the DCX BitPod system is an out-of-the-box dual-loop immersion mining system sized for home mining. And I think it's the only commercial system available that can make that claim. You can use it to simply mine Bitcoin, or being a dual-loop system is a perfect platform to build on if you want to use your mining heat for home use. So the next question to ask is what is the cost? And I think this is where the BitPod system really shines. As you can see in past episodes, I've already built a complete two-miner dual-loop immersion mining system from scratch. I pieced together the tank, the pumps, the radiators, the lines, heat exchanger, the dielectric fluid. I know what it takes and what it costs to build a complete system. And I can tell you, the DCX BitPod immersion tank package is a steal. Currently, you can buy the BitPod immersion tank with thermosafe dielectric fluid as a package for a little over two grand. That's a tank, a pump, a heat exchanger, and dielectric fluid for way less than what I paid for in my piece together design. And unlike something you might put together yourself, the BitPod system was designed by a team with a ton of experience in immersion mining. You don't have to do any thermal design, pump curve analysis, or anything else. You can just buy it and use it. Now, taking a step back, the complete BitPod system which adds on the dry cooler and fluid lines, goes for a little under 4K. And this still is a good deal. You get a dry cooler that will easily dissipate all the heat your miners will generate, and it will do that as quietly as possible with an adaptive fan controller. You get a hydronic pump, valves, and lines that are all designed to work together. You can just buy it and use it. And that's a huge value in itself if you're not lucky enough to have an engineering background or just don't have the time to spend the hours it takes to figure all of this out. Overall, the DCX BitPod system is a great idea if you're looking to get into home mining. If it was available when I started my home Bitcoin immersion mining journey, I definitely would have gotten one. And now that I'm forced to do a restart, I'm going to use the BitPod immersion tank as the heart of my mining system. Okay, so that's all I have for this episode. I'd like to thank DCX for providing me with the BitPod system shown, and in future episodes, you'll see how I integrate that into my existing home Bitcoin immersion mining setup. So with that, bye.